Okay, guys. So I, this is the closest I have to yesterday what we did, but uh, because I don't have the save file here, I'm using a different PC. It's been running nonstop for four days. Chose to act up today. All right. Oh, thank you, Jyoti. How sweet. Yeah. So let's start with text two. So I just clicked on it. Let's just pull in here. The context. You know how um, if, if you're doing a commercial space, they all have lit up uh, boards. You could use it for anything, but that's just one use case. I'm going to put it on the wall. You could use anyway, really. So I'm going to change my text here. So it says text. Let me say NASA or something. Or you could say NASA if you want. Let's just have a little bit of fun with it. And see, here you can say cash shadow off and on. Visibility off and on. You can do all sorts of things. And you could do all sorts of things, beveling and things like that. Let me go closer so you guys can see it. If I say bevel, it sorts of made, makes a smooth edge over here. <clears throat> Play around with all of these things, see what they do. So this is curdling. Right now, I'm just going to leave it at zero. And line spacing, if you had multiple lines, then you know you could adjust it. And word spacing, so NASA, see any space, it's going to change it up. And the cool part is you can go to materials and you can change it. Say I change my albedo color to some orange. And in the night, you want it to light up, right? So I'm going to go to sky system, time of day, maybe set it here. So it's dark enough. Hey, I can't even see it. I'm going to select it. Selection. Go to selection to select it. Okay. And first I'll make it emissive. So remember the color, some orangish color that we chose. And change this to extrude material because that is what is the outer layer is and you've got to do that emissive color choose to whatever color that the object is so the light that it emits uh, matches the emissive color okay and then you do this you probably can't see it now so let's go Wait, this is extrude material. Oh, emissive color is still up. The vibrant slide. You forgot the vibrant slide. Yes. Oh, the vibrant. Apparently, I forgot the vibrant. So, yeah, let's go and see. That didn't do it. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now 
now let's go to sky system time of day make it night so you see how it has a nice glow okay i think there is lens flare here maybe somebody was messing with something so go to post process lens flare intensity reduce it maybe keep it a little bit no. see now this looks up like a lit up board and let's go back to text actor emissive color if we increase it look at how it's giving a glow right even to the environment so that's how a little board would look okay so i'm just going to go back to sky system set it to ppm i think was what okay it still looks lit up so you can do all sorts of fun things with it change the font change the sizing and play with it a little bit so next i'm going to show the scatter tool so we have three types of scattering one is paint scatter which means you can paint it over so you can use it for stuff like i'm going to delete it and start over and here library foliage grass so i'm going to add two types of grass and go closer here and see i can change the density so here what is happening why does it look so sparse because here you know overlapping is off it means things can't overlap onto each other so maybe when you're placing like a street lamp or some solid substance right so you don't want it to overlap on each other but when it's grass and tv and things like that then it makes sense to have it on uh, i mean have it off so i'll increase the density also a little bit i'll increase it a little bit more oh, overlapping seems to be still Okay. Needs to be on. No. Needs to be on. Okay. So it should. Ah, there we go. So it's allowing overlapping. So it's it's coming way more densely. So that's how you want it to be when it's grass and things like that. So and so since it's grass, you can't see minimum rotation and all of those things. So let me show you. all of those things in spline scatter okay so spline scatter you can do lots of like to set up ivs or to set up something in rows something like that let me in this scenario i'm going to use place it um, as you know ivs on the compound wall so let's go to indoor plants in objects in indoor plants let me just pick something that looks flowery and nice a few of this this seems to be a big girl bush so i'm not going to select that hmm. let's try this i don't know how that's going to look so we are set now you can add up to six elements then Oh that is too much. Ah I know why. So I'm just going to press escape go to scatter. So this is the culprit. This is a very big uh palm plant I think. So let me start from here 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 here. You can place as many points as you want. Then when you're done hit enter and then we can select up oh. then we can select it then 
uniform scaling is on, which means that they're all scaled uniformly. So let's just decrease the density for now. Okay, and let's switch off the uniform scale. So when uniform scale is on, you can set the scaling for all of these plants um, at the same time. But if it's off, then you get a minimum scale and maximum scale. So you, you can say this is going to be my smallest plant and this is going to be my biggest plant and we will introduce a randomness and the application will make it all sorts of sizes. So give it like a good range. So I'm just going to give 0.5 and 1.4 maybe. Yeah. So here. So here, when you see it, you see how some plants are like bigger and some are smaller. Hmm. Yeah, you see how some are bigger and some are smaller. So I changed it to one. Oh, I changed it. Yeah, so you see how that is changing. So this is big and this is small and there's all sorts of sizes. And you know how all of them have this sort of thing hanging and it looks too even. So you can set your minimum rotation and maximum rotation. So they are all facing, you know, in different angles and they look rather natural. So, so you have a nice, you know, compound with, and maybe you could increase the density a little bit more. Maybe I'll set it to 40. Right. And here, if you want to change, so say there are, we have put in three elements, right? So if you want to change the scaling, so if you want all the other plants to remain the same and only one plant to sort of uh, be of all scales, you can just click on it and you can say override layer setting and change the probability of it, change the uniform scaling for that individual mesh. Okay, and the spline width. Okay, so you see this green patch of green patch here. So spline width is that. So if you want everything to be in a row, so you should keep your spline width small. If you want them to be spread out, one tree here, one tree here, you would increase the spline width and see they would get spread out like that. So if I decrease the spline width, they all come in one row. And if I do this, they're just getting more sparsed out. And mesh spacing also, you could play around with it. And of course, if I click on allow overlap on, it's going to be nice and you know bushy like that. Next, let's go. And you can also edit points. So if I click on edit points, right? So I had put some three to four points here. I could always like select one and, you know, pull it out. And yeah, so I could select one. Yeah, and pull it out like this, maybe place it here and it's going to go like that. So you, you, you can draw an IV like that. Okay. Uh, next scatter is area scatter. So here also, I'm just going to add another layer. Here also, you, you can use it to draw out an area. So, you know, if you don't want to paint so much, right, like there's, there's a lot of place here, you could always just select these things and you could draw out an area. Say I want it from here, 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 click enter. And that is going to be, let me go closer. These are really small cacti. You can't see. Okay. So I'm going to say a lot overlap on and increase the density to a thousand feet. Selection. Yeah. Yeah, so increase the density to a thousand. Yeah, there we go. So you can play 
with grass or you know if you want a lot of foliage somewhere this is a really helpful tool so if you look from here you know it, it, it looks so pretty so you could like adjust it you could pull it down so it looks like it's hanging off the compound and just play around with it and see what else you can do with it let's go to render settings so there's a lot of things here so you could increase the overall brightness and that's how it looks but you know don't don't uh, keep it overexposed and you could play around with exposure and bloom intensity is what makes the light glow you know how in movies when they want to show some this is heaven or something they keep the bloom intensity to maximum so everything looks very bright and glowy so that's what bloom means and you could play with saturation so it's either black and white or too colorful so that also needs to be balanced maybe a little less huh? maybe i think 90 was good right yeah and contrast i'm just going to keep it so play around with all of these sliders see what it does sharpen intensity everything starts looking very sharp and ISO is just, you know, the exposure, how much light it captures, the camera captures. And blur amount, right? So you, you could play with these. So it's very good for creating those, you know, bokeh effects or uh, other things. And lens flare intensity. So say if there is a light, right? Like if I'm looking at the sun here, the lens flare intensity will give, uh, will give these sorts of lens flaring effects. And then you can change the size. So vignette is, you know, that look that you get where photographs are fading from the corners. That's the vignette effect. Sometimes it looks good. Vignette fade, we can increase. And that's too much. That's covering the entire photograph. So let's leave it at that. And in global settings, you have Okay, so we've set it to quality. In DLSS, it's uh, deep learning super sampling. So this is to enhance performance while maintaining visual fidelity. So generally, when we are working, we suggest that you know you keep it at either performance or quality. And when you want to see what it looks like, you can go to ultra quality. See, when I click on ultra quality, it starts looking better. But again, you know there might be a lag. So using performance or quality might be good enough for you to work with and then when you want to preview it all you could go to better settings so screen percentage again you know that is all, all of these are like performance and ao intensity let me show you what happens so if i decrease the ao right so check out this wall and this wall so everything becomes bright there's no ambient occlusion so there's no shadowing effect and it starts to look really flat. So you need to keep your AO, you know, at a high enough value. So I'll keep it at nine now. So there is enough shadow effects and you see that sense of depth in uh, your scene. And AO radius, so imagine there is a globe right at the center and it's how it expands. So the globe is really small now. So if the sphere is really small, so if I keep increasing, you see how the shadow keeps uh, uniformly spreading yeah so let's keep it at its normal value or maybe increase it a little bit so reflection bounces so this basically means you know if you have one mirror think of a kaleidoscope or something like that no a periscope so think of one mirror right so if there is there are light rays falling off of it that mirror will reflect but if there is a mirror here and there's another mirror here this mirror won't reflect off of this mirror and you can't see uh, two reflections. So that's what a reflection bounces are. Um, it's better to keep it on and you can decide how many bounces. And I think yesterday we went through hybrid translucency. It is a hybrid between ray tracing and rasterization. So um, the photorealism might reduce a little bit, but when you have too many things happening like precipitation, rain, snow, fire, smoke, it's best to keep it on because that's when it all works properly. Mm, and translucency, refraction laser, all of this is for uh, glass. And this is the global illumination intensity. It just lights up the entire scene evenly. Okay. 
So you don't want to keep it too high again, you know, because it starts looking very, very fake. So anywhere between two to six, I think, should be a good range. And um, that's it for render settings. So we can probably I'll play some trees or something around. So this is just making patches of grass everywhere. We haven't manicured a garden, but never mind. We'll just make it look a little bit more. OK, I'm not in selection. I'm just going to put a compound and maybe a bunch of trees there. So I had a good save file there, but that PC crashed on me. We have overworked it. And this PC is more like rough notes. So if you see a lot of stuff over here, it's because somebody has been practicing on it. Mm, OK, mesh. We want, let's just make it this tall. And let's reduce the X and increase the Y to the length of our plot. See, I'm scrolling, so you know the speed of my mouse just increased. Okay, that is good enough. I'm not going to try and be too precise. Hit Alt, click on the mesh, and pull it. That's good enough. Hit Alt, click on the mesh. Turn it around. This is 270. Okay, I'm going to make a gateless compound. Once you get in, there's no getting out. Or I'll just leave this up. I can't use my camera otherwise. So let me go use a spline scatter to place trees all around the compound. This was my, okay. I'm going to add trees also to it. So I'll add different sorts of trees. So they all look very different. Banyan tree. I think that might be too big. And maybe a few bushes. Okay. That's good. So I'm going to place one here and one point here. That is too dense for me and it's too uniform. So what am I going to do? Oh, there we go. I forgot to present. Okay. Hit enter and then go to selection, click on it. And the density I'm going to say 30, 20. Yeah, I think 20 is good. And uniform scaling, I don't like it. I'm going to switch it off and my min scale and max scale will get activated. I'm going to keep it from 0.8. See, you can already see some of the trees reduce in size. And here I'm going to say 1.5. Okay. Some of them are bigger than the others, as you can see. Then I'm going to say minimum rotation is this. You see how this tree isn't moving, but this tree is. So it, it'll randomize everything and make it look very natural. And spline width, I believe it's too, you know, in a row like. So I'm going to. Okay. Yeah, I think that's enough. Otherwise, it'll go out of the compound. So let's go closer. There we go. See, this is, yeah, this looks good. So I'm going to do that to all three slide, uh, sides. So, you know, when we capture pictures, it's going to look better. Uh, scatter tool. I'm going to use the same thing. Maybe reduce the density. Okay, hit enter. Okay. 
I drew it in the air, so some of them are flying in the air. This is a magical place anyway, so I'm not going to bother if you guys have a problem with it. Then I'll just do it and not place my points in the air. Oh, I placed it on a tree. Okay, here I go. Now I did not place it on a tree. There we go. Looks good now. See how easy that was like mesh placement. So now I'm going to select these things and do the same thing like randomize it uniform scale of min scale 0.8 max scale 1.4. It could be whatever minimum rotation. Yes, rotate them a little bit. And yeah. Don't, yeah, spline width is good. Mesh spacing also, if I want, I can play with it. So some of them look like they're outside the compound, some in the compound. And I think, yeah, not bad. We can leave it at this. And this spline also, I'm not too happy with. So let's just delete it. And let's go back to our layer one, right? This is where we placed it. So I am going to. Oh, this is because of our spline width. So don't worry, we will go back and set it right. So enter. Remember spline width, we set it to a very big number. Uh, okay. So if I reduce the spline width, they'll all arrange themselves. And, yep. Right where I want them. And uniform scaling. If you do uniform scaling off but keep min and max at 1-1, one, one, it's the same as it being in uniform scaling. 1.2. Not uniform scaling. 1.2. And minimum rotation, maximum rotation. And density. I want this to be more dense, right? This looks like I haven't been watering my plants. Yeah. That's all right. Let's move. So let's. So so far we've been in the editor mode and we've done all sorts of editing here. And now let's go to. Let me increase my sunlight intensity a li little bit. It's looking a little. Hmm, go to sky system and day settings and sunlight intensity. Let me just increase it. That is too much. I'll keep it at 2.8 or 2.5. Okay, that's good enough. So, so far we've been doing all of our editing in the editor mode. We can go to um, exporter mode right now. So we have three modes of exporting. One is photo, one is video, and one is web VR. And let's do photo first. A lot of cool things. So let me remove all of these things. Let me remove this also. So add frame, okay? So I'm going to click add frame here and click on this. So here you remember we in editor mode, we went through sky system, weather system and all of those things. These are the same settings here, but this will only affect this frame. So say time of day, I set it to night here night here but i go to my editor mode nothing is changed so none of your settings are changed this is just what you get to export so if i go to exporter and click on this and then go to time of day and i need to capture it so this is what it will be but if i go to editor it's not changed exporter only for this it's changed okay so i can change that i can change dusk and dawn time 
and uh, I think sky systems and uh, and uh, weather system we went through yesterday. So I'm not going to go into that a lot. Here in camera, you know how um, for uh, Instagram you have different uh, resolutions, Facebook you have different resolutions, LinkedIn you have different. So there are there's a bunch of custom resolutions here. So I think this is for Instagram. So you can directly click this resolution and export it out and direct upload to Instagram uh, and market yourself. And if you want custom resolutions, you could also go with on, type in your own custom resolution, play with focal length and temperature. See, it's looking warmer, it, it looks colder. Play with ISO. And in focus mode, you know, okay, I'm going to change this custom resolution off and set it to a normal one. 16 is to nine is what's, uh, it, it's the standard. Mm, so no focus, but if I go to manual, I can change. So you know how there's one object that's really close. Maybe, you know, I'll place something here. Uh, go to editor mode and maybe I'll place one object right in decor. Maybe I'll place that here. Go to exporter. Right, go really close to that object. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to scale it a little bit. Okay, so let me go to camera. Oh, okay, add a frame. I'll add a frame. So this is my frame. Go to camera and change the focus distance. You see how it's all like blurry, so you can adjust it, say 25. So only one of them is in focus and the rest isn't. It's just a lot of trial and error until you know you get it just right. So now I think the swimming pool is in focus. Yeah, I think. So you can blur out the background and play with it just. So slowly. Yeah. Yes. Oops. My camera speed is too high. I'm going to reduce it to say a hundred. Because I need it to take me closer to the object very slowly. We don't want to scare it away. Ugh. Yeah. So you see how this is in focus and the background is blurred out. You can do things like that. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to capture it. OK, so there's it. So here I'm going to show you what tilt correction is. So generally in architecture, you need to do tilt correction. So you see how all of this is converging towards the sky. When I do tilt correction on, it becomes straight. So let me go even closer so the effect is more exaggerated. So see how everything looks a little skewed right now. If I do tilt correction on, everything is proper and parallel, right? So you can do that and on. So maybe capture. So here, I'll say no focus. I don't want to get into that now. So in filters, we have a lot of filters. So uh, you you can show it to your clients like this. Well, don't. That's not a very good look. But, you know, a pencil sketch, whatever it is that you need, right? Like you can try out 
So this is, I think, very glowy and meta will say, wow, I think it's cool. Um, I just do hit none right now. And there's a lot of tints that you can use. So if I go to autumn, everything starts looking autumn-y. Yeah. So here you can go to cinematics and you can choose any one of these. This looks really good, like it's an old house. So play around with a lot of tints. So there's several different categories also here. In vintage, you can choose many. And uh, pro film, Hollywood. Let's try Hollywood, see what that's about. Oh, OK. So right now, I don't want any tinting. So I'm just going to leave it. Just remove tint. And so those are all the things. Play around. So video is really cool. I'll show you video. I'm going to delete this. Oh. Yeah, I am going to delete all of these clips that were previously made. Oh. Delete. Delete. Okay. So let's start afresh. So this is your this is our video mode in exporter mode. I think somebody's turned on. Somebody's turned on weather, precipitation, right? So let's, where is it? Yeah, rain. We don't want it. Precipitation amount. Be... Okay. <clears throat> let's go here. And let's go to sky system. Okay. Double click clip and then you're in the clip. And then we can go to weather system. And... Uh, Let me show you from the first. We are in camera settings right now. Uh, minimize everything so it looks a little neater. So the sky, weather, camera, and post process, right? So we're in weather, precipitation amount, I'm going to decrease it to zero. Let's come to it later. So in sky, let's say, let me pick one angle here. Okay, so I think this looks good. So here I am going to leave the time of day, cloud coverage and everything as it is, capture and go to frame two. I can move around my camera. So I want my frame two to be here. And here I want a little bit of, okay, for now I'll turn it on. Time of day to be somewhere here and increase the cloud coverage to somewhere here maybe and uh, cloud face to here maybe. And let's not set any Aurora right now. So maybe make it a little bit more foggy, okay? And I'll say capture. Did I? Yeah, you captured. Okay. I so now let's move a little bit further here. <coughs> I'm going to add another frame here. And here I am going to do time of day to set it to night. And uh, cloud phase, I'm not going to worry. Star intensity, let me increase. And Aurora, let's bring in Aurora, right? And Aurora phase. And let me hit capture. OK. So now I here is the clip second. OK, now we have captured frame one, frame two, frame three. And let's say play it for six seconds, okay? And I'll say play, okay? So it starts from here. It does linear interpolation. See how naturally it looks, you know, from, I'm going to play it again. So it starts from day, the clouds are moving. It eventually comes to night, the moon comes up and the aurora, right? So I think this is very cool. So now let me show you, uh, Precipitation. So I'm just going to say save. Let's uh, add another clip. So in this clip, okay, we're in this clip. Double click the clip and then you will enter the clip and then you'll have multiple frames and double click the frame. 
Oh, I'm just going to delete it. This is something that has happened before. Yeah. So let's exit it. Double click it. So go here. Oh, I'm just going to exit it. Sorry, I don't know why that's happening. Let's look at it. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is okay. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you for precipitation and things like that, or fog density. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello? Did somebody say something? Okay. I don't think anybody was talking. Yeah. I, I think that's my voice that you hear. <laughs> yeah. So let's do it for something else, right? So. Let's show precipitation and fog density this time. So I'm just going to keep it at this. So time of day, let's just maintain it at three o'clock. And cloud coverage, let me reduce it. And precipitation amount, oh, let it be off here. So wetness also let it be off here. So I'll go to my frame two. And here, I'll keep the time of day uniform, increase the cloud coverage and increase the precipitation amount and increase the wetness. Okay. And capture. Yeah. And here I am going to make it full time of day. I'm going to keep it uniform. Oh, cloud cover. Because of the cloud coverage, we've lost some sun, right? And precipitation amount, I'm going to keep it at maximum. And wetness also at maximum. And hit capture. Okay. I'm just going to leave that. So see, slowly the clouds are increasing. It's getting darker and it's raining. So you can create a lot of cool systems here. Uh, I mean, you can show a lot of cool things here. And you can play around with a lot of things. You can make the water move. You can create all sorts of cool effects. And you just have to say point A and point B. We will do the linear interpolation. And you know it's going to look damn cool. And you can add post process also, so per frame. And uh, you could increase the bloom intensity and make this look a little bit brighter. And the blur amount. You know, just have the water be in focus and blur out the background and things like that. Lens flare, of course, we'd, we'd have to see some light here. Mm, and vignette fade to give it some sort of, you know, that retro look. Okay, so I think since we started late, I don't want to keep you guys here for too long. 7.30. All right, if you guys have any questions, you can ask me and I will show you or if you guys have used the tools i'd like to like just chat with some of you and see you know how the experience has been or if you faced any difficulties we'd be happy to solve all of them so see we made all sorts of changes in the exporter mode right so back to editor mode you can do whatever you want to again so that doesn't carry over so it's very useful because you might want to do different different shades and different effects but you want you still want your scene to remain intact come back here and make some changes so if you guys have some questions for me i'd be happy to answer them otherwise uh, we could call it today and uh, okay so sudesh chauhan says not able to import skp5 huh so can you share your screen sudesh so we can sort of debug it right here yeah, one thing, one thing, and then live streaming. We may not want to. How big is the SKP file?
Oh, okay. Actually, okay, so the I supported tried. formats currently are .obj, .fbx, .bae, and .gltf. So if you could just export your SketchUp files in one of these formats, uh, you'll be able to import them and work with it. So .skp files can only be opened with SketchUp, right? Yeah. Because it's a proprietary format, it's not like a standard 3D format. So you can open them within SketchUp and you need to export them in one of the more standard uh, 3D formats. We also have direct link um, plugins coming out shortly. So, you know, you can just uh, live sync it. So any changes that you make in SketchUp will be reflected in the RenderPub Studio viewport. So it's incredibly helpful because you don't have to keep going back and forth. Okay, ma'am. So that's coming soon. Yeah, we'll send out a patch to you. So, Desh, if you get something out, we'd really like to see your render. You can also join our Discord channel and, uh, you know, leave any questions there because all of our team is there and, uh, you know, anybody will be, if you have design questions, the designers will get to answer them. If you have any uh, technical questions, the developers will answer them and you'll get a very quick response. So, please do join our Discord channel. All right, then any other questions? Yeah, there's our uh, Discord link and Telegram. Okay, then thank you so much, guys, for being here. Uh, you, we are always, you know, we have open channels. You can always ask us any questions you have, and uh, maybe you know, Vishwanth can leave for those of you on uh, YouTube watching us on YouTube live stream. Uh, he'll add all of those links in the description, so, so you also have access to the tools and all the models that we've worked with here, and you can also explore our library. So thank you so much for being here. So we'll meet you all tomorrow. See ya.